Hello, this is Maxim and uh, today I'm gonna explain to you how does the spectral pan and the spectral phase work in Adobe Edition 3.0. So uh, in order to understand the thing properly and because I found that the documentation was lacking, the I decided to kind of reverse engineer a little bit the, those view and I hope with those, uh, those recording uh, it will help you to understand as well as it did for me. So let's go to the multi-track view and what I did is a uh, tree test. First of all, uh, I did some tone recording. Basically, I'm playing some tone through that speaker and my recorder right here has two microphones and the two microphones will pick up the sound with a different time delay between the two microphones and that give extra information to addition to show to us. So let's listen at this. Nothing too fantastic. So first the time signal. So I guess you must be already familiar with the spectral view. So it's, it's probably not a surprise for you to see this, but just in case, uh, what we see here is the time, the frequency and the magnitude in with the brightness. So when the frequency increase, the line increase in frequency. And because they are all about the same loudness, they are of a relatively similar brightness. So I just hit play. Okay. But now what happens if we go to the spectral pan display? So the 500 Hertz signal appear in teal, 1 kilohertz in green, and uh, yellow 2K, 3K, 4K. Here what we see is we still have the time in the x-axis, but here we have the percentage of pan, so on either one side of the stereo field or center red. And if we go back to my video, because my speaker is on one side, what it uh, turned out to show in addition is, uh, oops, I need to zoom in again, is that my tone are on one side of the stereo field, which is as expected. But this is cool because if I have another thing on the other side, I could see them on the other side here. And now let's go to the spectral phase display. This one showed the difference of phase between the the two microphones. So it's it's related to the frequency. So it, it doesn't necessarily align the same way we would expect with the spectral pan. The, the use for that is more if you intend to mix down to mono because it if you have a difference of phase of 180 degree, the two sine wave would cancel out and you would attenuate or mute the signal. So basically you want to avoid such a thing when, when mixing. So if I want to demonstrate you this, uh, I first need to set those signal to a relatively same loudness, otherwise subtracting with, with a small value won't uh, produce a big result. And now I'll mix down and observe the magnitude See, it dropped to minus 21 instead of minus 12, let's see. So in mono, that, that was attenuated. So that's why the spectral phase can be useful. Um, let's go back to this multi-track. This time, what I did is play all the tone together, but I moved the speaker around the device. So let's see this. All right, and into the frequency content now. So from an engineering point of view, using only this view, it's pretty hard to tell if the source move it around. We can see it's being quieter here and louder here by the loudness, but that's all what we can see. Now let's go to the spectral pan display and look at the magic. Ta -da! So once again, we have all our frequency with different color and we see them moving from one side to the middle, then to the center. And here we got some noise that are centered. So now when I look at this, I see those noise here. I know they were in the middle of the stereo field. I can uh, delete them this way. But another way to do that I can go here and the same thing as the spectral frequency display. I can use my uh, marquee selection tool and select everything in the middle. Delete, delete. And if I go back here, I'll filter it out all the frequency that was common. Those ones were probably not common. I'll do 
Now let's go back to the multi-track and uh, I want to show you other application of filtering you can do with this. So in this example, I have a, a parasiting noise and I have some voice on the side. And now I'm talking uh, nearby the microphone on a different direction and see what's happening. That is heavily interfered. So filtering this could be pretty hard. I mean, you can always try to select this and delete. Okay, that's a... Oh, that's not good. I'm talking nearby the microphone on a different direction. Okay, I, I, I could do better than this, but anyway, that's not the point. Here, let's undo. And let's see what's happening into our spectral pan display. We see two area of signal, uh, and we see a lot more color than before. That's because our frequency content is more complex than it was. Uh, in those cases, sometimes you don't want this to really focus on the frequency content, but more on the amount of content on each side of the stereo field. Uh, in, in this case, you you can turn off the, the tint prism here, and what it does, it, it's well it doesn't show you the frequency anymore so the brightness just show you the amount of of signal on each side so i see i have quite a lot of signal here and other signal right here and if for some reason the two source my mouth and the speaker emit the same frequency well for the microphone it would appear like a virtual source located in the middle. So in this case, this signal would appear right here. But if you delete this, you would turn out to delete half of the signal of my voice and half of the signal of the speaker, which is not really what we want here. We really want to delete uh, one side or the other. Uh, I'm not quite sure which side I need to delete. So let's just try this one. Go to see the spectral view. And I deleted the voice, so I see the, the tone remained. So let's go back. Let's delete the interference here. We keep what's centered and on the side. I go back here, and now you see it all disappear by magic. And now I'm talking nearby the microphone on a different direction and see what's happening. And now we, we still can hear just a little bit of the noise ramping up when it was crossing my voice right ear and ear. And you can still see a little bit, but that's because of the virtual source that was created. It's impossible for addition to identify that. But anyway, from there, it's easy to use the lasso tool, do manual correction, use the noise reduction tool, uh, and so on to, to improve further the, the filtering. One other thing you, you can do is, um, is to apply just an attenuation of the signal like this. Or you can apply any filter that you want. So I hope that was helpful for you and uh, that you're going to take advantage of this great tool. Unfortunately, it's not available into the latest version of Audition. That was Maxim into this uh, spectral pan and phase display tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and see you again later.